Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. What are we doing today? Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about a banner that I think is going to be upcoming, which is the one that features uh, Taigong Wong, which we'll be re-releasing with the pre-release campaign part 2, which I think is going to be announced later today, maybe? I tried to do I tried to do this as last minute as possible. I thought, I thought for sure it was going to announce today, and instead they announced that Advanced Quest Part 5 was coming. <laughs> So if you want to get your seashell, phoenix feathers, and proof of hero grinding on, it's your time right now to go in there. Uh, but anyway, I'm pretty sure the main uh, pre-release campaign should be coming up soon. The reason is, is that the event started technically on the 1st, but it went on to maintenance on the 30th. So that would mean that today, the 7th, would be when it actually comes out for realsies. And in general, because the campaign features like a, a weekend login bonus, you would think that that would mean that the week leading up to it would lead up to um, the day that we get Trom, which is going to be on May 12th. But actually, none of that makes sense. That doesn't follow it at all. Never mind. Either way, just to be sure, I'm going to be talking about the banner today and then to see if there's any changes to the Trom pre-release campaign. Then I'll go in there. So after that extremely long intro, <laughs> let's go in finally and go, this is the Tunguska Sanctuary Release Commemorative Summoning Campaign. Now, these are going to be releasing with the Tunguska um, main interlude. <laughs> that was the word I was looking for. Because um, this was the banner that released with the Tunguska way back. I was supposed to say way back in the day, but it was like literally uh, so many months ago. It was like the December. Anyway, these are the craft essences that are going to be on it. Empty Garden, Turning of Tides, and Street of Eternal Slumber. None of them are too crazy as far as I can tell, just quickly looking at them. Start MP, kind of nice, but 40% instead of the 50% is kind of like a uh. And it's going to be very hard to get all the copies unless you're going crazy for Taigong Wong or something. So yeah, just kind of the ones that would be nice to have for the yard or for maybe some team build that I'm not 100% knowing of right now. But not nothing that jumps out at me like, hey, go get right now. We'll start with Nikic. Uh, Darenia Nikic, she is a writer. She has one quick, two arts, two buster. Three quick uh, three quick hits, two arts hits, three buster hits, and five hits on the extra. Her first skill is the Eternal Young War Maiden B+. Grant self gut status for one time, three turns. Grant self debuff immunity for one time, three turns. And then gain crit stars every turn for three turns. The uh, reviving, you revive with 3000 HP and you get 10 stars on regen on the cooldown of 6. Her second skill is the Belza Damask, the Shining uh, White Dragon, slaying Armnance A. Increases own arts performance for 3 turns, increases buster performance for 3 turns, and increases damage against dragon enemies for 3 turns. The arts and buster damage are both 30%, and the bonus against dragons is 50% on a cooldown of 6. And her third skill is the Belza Barco, my beloved Shining White Horse EX. Charges on MP gauge, increases party's crit damage for three turns, and then increases party's uh, damage against dragon enemies for three turns. So the MP is 20% at level 10. The crit damage is 30% at level 10, and versus dragon damage is 30% at level 10, and that has a cooldown of 5. I don't know why I individually all said level 10. <laughs> But it is what it is. Her two passive skills are Writing EX and Magic Resistance A. Her pen skill, which is the third one, is an anti alter ego t attack damage aptitude. And her noble phantasm is the rank A Niminya Gornich. The evil dragon comes uh, and vomits Sid. Uh, rank A noble phantasm hits four times, deals damage that ignores defensive buffs to all enemies, and then inflicts burn with a thousand damage for three turns to them. Reduces their defense by 20% for 3 turns, and then the add damage at level 1 is 300%, and if you get her all the way to MP level 5, it's 500%. And then she has an increase in own buster performance for 1 turn, and the charge at the charge level 1 is 20%, and in the final charge level it's 40%. And that is Nikic. Uh, how is she? She is... Oh... Okay. Um... The main benefit of Nikitch, as someone who wants Nikitch, has always been that she kind of looks like the blue eyes white dragon, and she looks like this in her alternate stages. 
Knowing that, in terms of actually using Nikitch, it's a little bit funky because she is an anti-dragon unit, which is nice, except for the fact <laughs> that there are multiple anti-dragon units, including a free one, and most of these also deal 150% to their damage as well. And also, she's not limited, and we're also literally getting a story-locked anti-dragon unit pretty soon that I think also does more damage to dragons than her. Because while Nikitch is at 70%, she deals 150% damage against dragons. And while the, the difference is a, it's a single dragon versus an AoE dragon, it's a different thing, I guess. You can go into that. And also, I will say that... Um, yeah, I guess it's a different thing. So she ends up filling a niche that is anti-dragon, but it's a niche that's actually slightly competitive. So then you really want to use her for specifically fights where you have to fight a buttload of dragons all at once, and that way you can take advantage of her AoE and Noble Phantasm. It ends up being that there just isn't a lot of cases for that unless you're trying yourself. Um, so she ends up being one of those units, where it's a unit that has a definite use that you can see, and she's okay with it. She gets herself um, a bonus 70% against dragons, which is which ain't nothing. But also she is weirdly like, and she's like split between arts and buster because she's half and half. Even though Noble Phantasm is buster base. So it ends up being a case just like, I, I don't know. I, it's a real shame to say just because I do really like Nikitch, but... Um, she ends up being a unit that probably could use a little bit more buffs. It, I think the only the thing that's kind of a bummer for me is that she's it's kind of a pain to loop with her for for actual um, unless you're doing a very specific build. And the reason is is that the classic way to do looping when terms of Buster is two um, Koyanskaya's and then an Oberon, and then you just have to use a unit that gives himself at least 30% starting NP. And she only gives herself 20% on hers, which is literally just 10% away, because Oberon can give you 70%, you just need to provide the last 30%, and she can't do that on her own. Even if you combine this with, let's say, using a 50% starting NP thing, and you combine it with her second skill, that still is you starting with 70%, using this skill, and being at 90%. It's a little bit weird, I don't know. Uh, again... I know plenty of people that like Nikitch. I am included in one of those. I summoned for her on the Taigon Wong banner trying to get her and I failed to get her, which is a real shame. I hope to now randomly get her. I don't think I can ch justify chasing her anymore. <laughs> I can only chase her on the one banner and now I have to just kind of hope she randomly appears for me. And in which case I'll gladly use her and find different ways to use her. But for the time being, that's basically all I can really think of of Nikitch, which is just kind of a shame. Um, I don't really like to talk that down bad on units, but there isn't really a lot in terms of in terms of design. Obviously, in terms of character design, I think she's excellent in all all stages of her, including the fact that she does remind me of the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Um, it just ends up being a case of just like in terms of actual in-game use it's a little bit more hard to find the perfect place for her and then when you do find the perfect place for her i think there are units that are probably a little bit better at what she does so hopefully they maybe find a time to buff her at some point if you're someone who's a little bit more into using nikitch feel free to tell me i would love to know just for future anytime i have to talk about nikitch or when i finally do get nikitch i can see that there's other ways to use her but right now that's literally all i can see so that's Nikitch. Um, I know plenty of people also picked her for the free star, uh, free four star ticket. She was definitely one of the ones I wanted to choose, but I ended up going with Salter because um, story units are much harder to get. Because like I said, both of these units are actually not limited. So you can just randomly get them. All right, next, Taigong Wong. Taigong Wong, he is a writer. He has uh, two quicks, two arts, one buster, with four hits on the quick, three hits on the arts, three hits on the buster, and five hits on extra. His first skill is the original Art of War A+, increases party's quick performance for three turns, and then also increases their attack and MP damage for three turns. It's 15% attack to quick, 15% uh, to quick attack and MP damage on a cooldown of seven. 
His second skill is God's Execution B, which seals all enemy skills for one turn, and then increases own damage against divinity enemies for three turns, and then increases own damage against demonic enemies for three turns, and that's 50% for both. And his third skill is the Philosophy Key Crest EX, charges on MP gauge and then charges the party's MP gauge. 30% to MP, 30% uh, to himself and 20% to the party, which gives him a grand total of 50% NP. On a cooldown of 6, and writing A plus is his one passive. His uh, third append skill is an anti foreigner attack damage aptitude, and his noble phantasm is the god smithing whip, Dush and Beyond. Uh, hits 6 times, it's quick, it deals damage to all enemies, and then it deals a, a bonus 150% extra damage to divinity enemies. NP damage at level 1 is 600%, and if you get him to all the way to MP5, it's 1000, and then he reduces their quick resistance for 3 turns. At charge level 1, it's 20%, and if you get him all the way to the final charge level, it is 40%, and that is Taigong Wong. How is Taigong Wong? I think Taigong Wong is a fantastic support <laughs> unit, and this one I know a little bit more about because I actually have and was able to use Taigong Wong. Because when I failed to get in the kitsch, I was able to get Taigong Wong, and after I went, damn, that kind of sucks. I <laughs> then said, wait a minute, I think he's actually a better unit, and he is, by miles ahead of her. So the fun thing about Taigong Wong is that he can actually be used in one of ton of two ways, um, and actually multiple ways now that I think about it, but he can be used in kind of multiple ways, but here's the two ways. In Challenge Quest, he can be work out pretty well. The reason is, is that he's actually got a bonus against Divinity and Demonic based enemies. He has the ability to seal all enemy skills. He, all three of his skills, except for the second one, which only targets himself and the enemy, but his first skill and the second and the third skill are party based and are party wide. So this increase to quick attack and MP damage will go to everyone. This third skill, which charges his own MP gauge and charges the parties, is by uh, 20% and then 30% to him is really nice. And it's also on a cooldown of 6, which is really good. The one thing that's bad about this first skill is that it's a cooldown of 7, but it ends up being fine. Um, so he ends up being extremely useful for a lot of... And also he's 150% extra damage to divinity enemies, and there's a lot of dudes who are divinity, who are bosses in this game, it ends up being a very relevant. You'll never get the full effect of having, except for when you literally against the boss that released when he released, which was um, Koyanskaya, the Koyanskaya beast fight, where she was both divine and demonic. For the most part, you're not going to find a lot of divine demonic um, dudes to fight. Um... But they they exist for sure, and you will very easily be able to, to uh, deal more damage to them. And also, if he is on the team, even if he doesn't do a whole buttload of damage on his NP, maybe he has low damage on... Because it is AoE, he is still helping the team just a little bit by having the ability to reduce their quick resistance, and it's actually not that hard to get his NP up. Because like I said, he is giving himself 50% while also giving 20% to the party. And he has two arts cards, so it's not that bad. And so in Challenge Quest, he can be used very effectively. In terms of farming, he's fantastic. I love using him. I can't wait for Summer Scotty to come out so I can use a little bit more teams. But in terms of just messing with him normally, I've been able to use him with plenty of teams. Um, some that use go with Double Scotty and it kind of goes that way with Oberon in the back. Some other ones where it's like, actually, because my Scotty's already Bond 10, let me get some other people to kind of get in there. In which case I then use Bride Nero is usually the one I go to because Bride Nero can give some attack up and then give 40% MP charge, um, 30% to MP charging and then also 40% um, to MP gain, which is something that a lot of quick servants always need. So he ends up taking a lot of good service from that, and because he's also able to give so much buffs to himself, he can kind of make up the deficient a little bit of not having that much damage compared to everything else. Um, and the one team that I showed off here is actually the team I'm now using for farming gold. The team uses my Scotty, which I use as the main kind of quick support for Tai Gong. Tai Gong is his own support unit, and he's also the AoE unit. The other two support units I use are Bride Nero, and then the other one is Reigns, and the Reigns one I use from a friend because it's easier to find a Reigns with the proper CE than it is to find a Scotty. There are some Scotty friends that I have that do use that one, but it's literally just saves so much time if I'm just looking for a Reigns. So this is the team I kind of use for it, for that reason. And also, in general, my previous old team had actually used two CEs that weren't, um... 
QP grind CEs, and now with Taigong, I only need the one CE, which is to buff his power up, and then the rest can just use money CE, and then he can handle it from here. Because on the third fight, when you fight the single elephant, that boss is divine. <laughs> so he deals 150% extra damage, so you're able to kill with the third MP. Usually a lot of um, AoE units can kind of fail a little bit. And this is at MP level 1 as well. I may have mine, my pen skill at mana loading to be 20%, but that's because I got him to bond 6, and that's why I unlocked it right there. So I think Taigong Wong is a fantastic unit. He's a fantastic support. Like, in general, I have a lot of fun using him. I find a lot of fun using different teams with him. And then there's also some future teams that I'm looking forward to using with him eventually. Like, if I'm able to get Summer Scotty, and also when I try and get Summer Chloe as well, which is another unit that I'm looking forward to in the future. I think I've seen that with Summer Chloe, it's actually possible to grind with the Black Grail with him. And I'm able to get him to around like 48% with the Black Grail, which is which is currently now, which is mine is maximum broken, but it's only like level 76 or so. So it doesn't fully get there, but I can feel like it's going to get there soon. But either way, that is just me talking about Taigong Wong. This is the benefit of when I actually have the unit and I can actually talk about them. In my experience, I think he's a fantastic unit. Now, is he a fantastic unit to actually go out and summon for right now? He's not limited. So there's always a chance you're just going to randomly get them. Like, I have my waiver, for example. I never chased waiver, but my waiver is already MP4. And <laughs> so it's possible that, honestly, knowing Fago and knowing how much it actually hates to give you the featured unit, you're just as likely to summon on Taigong Wong, fail to get him, go to the next banner, and then immediately get him there and then fail to get the unit there. Like, that's just the way Fago is. Fago is a cruel game. <laughs> it is one that will play tricks on you in every single capacity that it can. So that's my one thing that I'll always say is that when it's not a limited servant, you really have to balance it with how much do you love this unit. Like for both of these units, and this goes to Nikitch as well. If you love Nikitch, this is your best chance to get Nikitch. And especially when it comes to, if you're someone who's looking to get like a, hum, a level 120 Nikitch, then yes, of course you're going to be summoning on this because you're never going to get a better chance to get this many medals with the Kitch. She's not like the Lost Belt 6 4 stars where they're constantly featured. I think this is like the last time she's actually like featured on a banner, which I think I can look through here. Um, they don't even feature her banners because she's not limited. <laughs> but she doesn't get featured that much because she's just always on them. So I guess that maybe is a benefit for summoning on them. But the point is, that's there for the people who love those units. So the, for the people that love Nikitch and the people who love Taigong Wong, this is your chance to get your dude. This is your chance to get Taigong Wong just slightly stronger and get more medals for him. And that's what the mindset you need to be. If you're not someone like that, I think it's something of a kind of wait and see. And then the second you get them, you get to actually have fun and, you know, let it rip and do stuff like that. But that's how I feel about it. Um... And you also have to look at what's coming up in the future, and to be what's coming up in the future, um, even if you take aside the potential, which now that I feel like with this coming up, I don't think that banner's coming up anymore, so I'm not going to say it, but if this proves to be wrong, then that's going to be funny. Hi, Lucifer! My cat Lucifer is coming up to say something. Do you want to say something, boy? He backed away. He licked me to tell me you better tell him about the double coin Skya banner coming up, but I don't think it's coming up. I don't think so anymore. Um, but obviously the big one that's actually coming up that we know for 100% fact is Charlemagne. And then Charlemagne's also coming with someone else eventually that is technically a spoiler that I'm actually now afraid to go down here because I forgot about that. So, But people know Char Charlie is coming. And then also, like I said, Krimhild is coming. And she's also someone who is... Um, sto not, yeah, story locked. So that makes her a pain in the ass to actually try and get copies for so, you know, be smart. I can just basically tell you this is what's coming up. This is what I see. This is how I feel about the units. But at the end of the day, it's up to you to be summoning. And if you choose to summon, I wish you the best of luck for it. And that's the end of the video, everyone. I wish you all the best of luck. Um, hopefully we get info about um, Trom. The pre-release campaign part two should probably be announced um, during day roll. And if not, maybe, I don't know, maybe they've released it during this. <laughs> maybe during this. <laughs> maybe during the broadcast is when they're like, and now here it is. Though, again, I think that it's very likely it's probably just going to be announced and released tomorrow and all that. 
So, you know. There you go. <sighs> now he says something. What do you want, boy? Nothing. All right, everyone. Best of luck to you. I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, probably when they finally release, I'll go over the actual campaign and what goes in it. There's not very much. Um... Yeah, there just ain't much. <laughs> and that's it. Until next time, uh, have a good day. Have a good night. And I'll see you guys the next time. Peace out.